Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. Today, you guys, we are in Ohio. We are in Bell Fountain, Bell Fountain, Bell Fountain, right there, <laughs> Ohio. We are at Old Mint Antiques, never been here before. We're gonna get inside, see what we can see. Hopefully we find some beautiful, unique things to capture on camera. We might even find some stuff for sale. It's snowing, hailing. Let's get inside, here we go. Look at that building. It's got a great exterior vibe to it. I want to try to get this sign here on camera, you guys. Oof. It's a day. Look at that. I love the black, the green, the yellow. Very deco. Ooh. All right, guys. Let's get inside. See what we can find. Hopefully, they're going to let me film. I don't know. Here we go. <laughs> okay, guys. Here we are on the interior. I bet you never would have guessed that. No. Uh, so we do have, of course, the windows that are up here on the front. I am going to start off there. We do have some more primitive or colonial items. Um, you know, I have to say that I have really begun to have a bigger appreciation uh, for these. This is really interesting. These little game pieces, the corkscrews. We even have some bingo cards. Bingo was just quite the game back for there in the day for those crazy Victorians. We do, of course, have some antique books here in Uncle Tom's Cabin. Uh, it was priced at retail, not where I need it to be. Beautiful copy of Grimm's Fairy Tales, but at one twenty-five. Uh, cool to see, just not for our reselling budget. Did I miss Chenille over there to the right? Uh, this was interesting, a little bit of a clothing setup here, but we can kind of creep through here. And then we do have a gorgeous little setup here, kind of like a little setting room uh, set up for us. Uh, love the little cabinetry here. Interesting that they put a wall tapestry there across the desk. I really like that. The tufted green, I believe it's let me look at it it was velvet not a mohair no maybe that could have been mohair um thirty dollars that's insane that's a great deal this beautiful little uh iridescent art glass here there was no label um this was gorgeous this oh i wanted this this art deco brass elephant with the uh, amber crackle glass shade but it was priced at 235 darn it Cute little single brass candlestick here at $30. I was looking for a single candlestick, but $30 was a little steep for the intended purpose that I had in mind for it. Now, I did spot this little China head baby doll here. Now, I don't believe that she is an antique one. I was checking here along the collar. Um, I did pull it back here uh, along what they call the shoulder part at $6. She is definitely vintage, so she's got her little bisque hands and... She's got her little bisque feet here. The clothing is, look at that, it's so adorable. I love it. Um, she gave us a little kick. So at $6, I'm definitely gonna pick her up. There is most certainly value on her and she's got a beautiful aesthetic and look to her. I really love the bright green vibrancy of these faux apples here and this great silver plate. It's very Art Nouveau. All of the vines and the twists. I love the the intricacy of the Art Nouveau movement, but I didn't see a price on that one. Then I did spot this beautiful little dish here. It's $15. It said candy dish. And I was like, well, that's really elaborate. And it's got a beautiful amber glass insert into it. Uh, the glass insert does, of course, come out. Now, I did not see a manufacturer on this piece, but I absolutely loved the uh, faux brass wrap to it. Apollo is a manufacturer. Look at that. Very Greek revival there. We've entered now into the main part of the antique mall. So the windows are directly to our left. This was really interesting. It was like these textiles, almost like uh, carved carpeting, turned it into wall art. I thought that was pretty cool. It's got a very 80s, 90s vibes to it. Go ahead, Miss Brenda Sanders, get it. I think she's very talented. Then I did spot this great crazy quilt. This one was priced at only $65, and I was like, oh, please, 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 please. Laying it out, it was in relatively good condition. There were some squares that were missing, and unfortunately, a lot of the satin and silks, there was melting and tattering to it. There were a couple of squares that were just entirely missing. You see the black one there by the cherries. But overall, I think it was really cool. I liked the embroidered patches to it, but the condition really held it all. I, you know, I, I regret not getting this. I do. Uh, the underside, it looked like it was exposed to some bleach at some point. Um, 
That's unfortunate. But then I did spot folded up another crazy quilt. Look at this one. It's much brighter, but it doesn't look like it was finished. Um, I, there's obviously some squares here that are missing, um, which I think a talented seamstress could definitely fill those in, no problem. Uh, but again, it just, I don't know what was wrong with me. I don't know why I didn't get this one either. This one's only 75. This underside, that cloth was so soft. You guys, I regret these. I do. I regret both. Gosh darn it. Maybe I'll have to go back and get them. Then I did, speaking of some Victorian, you know, the crazy quilts very popular with those crazy Victorians. Did spot some ornaments in here in that bottle brush candy cane. Uh, do you see, of course, the holly and berry, the left and the deer pulling the sleigh and a little star down here. I spotted this star, but unfortunately there was some pretty substantial damage to it. And it turns out it was actually a light bulb. I thought it was going to be an ornament, but no, it was wrong. $12 for that. Uh, I just couldn't do it. I love the little Japanese lantern one there too. Candy cane, the little bottle brush candy cane here with a few of the embellishments. There was no price on this. I like that it would have been like a craft project. I definitely would have added more to it. But then I did spot this little cross here with all of the mercury glass beads. You know, these were very popular hobbies. You know, you would buy the mercury glass beads and then wire them and kind of create specific shapes out of patterns. So uh, I did pick that one up. It was great condition, only $12. So bright and colorful, like that one. Can't wait for Christmas. We're going to be doing a antique Christmas tree with nothing but Victorian ornaments. It's going to be so special. I'm looking forward to it. But any old how, back to our video here. We've got the cut glass, the little vanity jars here. Typically, these would have been cream jars. $35. The vendor definitely knows what's up. I love these. Uh, the lids on these are in really good condition. The larger one here, that one was priced at 60 So that was a no-go for us. But I absolutely love the look of these. Little jewelry casket here. Now it is missing the pin uh, that would have held the hinges together at $20. That's not the worst. You could use a paper clip. Uh, if you do find one that doesn't have the hinge in it, you can just slide a paper clip in there and it'll, it's, I mean, honestly, it's literally a piece of wire that's missing from it. Now we did see the little milk glass jar here, but then in looking at it, I saw this little art deco print here. Uh, it's really cute. I'm not familiar with the the artist. It is in a more contemporary 80s vibe uh, frame to it. $10, it's cute. But again, just not being familiar with the artist. I think $10 would be great for a collector. Pardon me. But any old how, back to the milk glass jar. I thought it was going to be grease, but it wasn't labeled. Uh, now the vendor has it marked as a sugar bowl. It's a big sugar bowl. I don't know. It would have been part of a collection, I know that. Here we see the top of a Viking glimmer lamp. Unfortunately, this is not the base that it came with, so that was sad but true. It looks like we have another little piece of Viking here in the ruby. Uh, the little creamer, love seeing that. Viking does a wonderful job with their colors. They're always so dense and saturated. And some other bits and bobs. Don't really see anything. We're just going to kind of take our time and check things out here, make sure that we don't miss anything. I don't think that we do, but <laughs> uh, we've got some sterling silver here. Looks like it's, it's, they're more folk art, that jewelry piece there. It looks like it was made out of spoons and forks. And then down here, we got some tools, some murder implements. Watch out. Mm, yeah, not our vibe. Now I have moved on. Uh, we're in some cases here, kind of seeing, I thought that was uh, Fiesta Wear. I do think that it is. I'm not familiar with that color. The year was fabric on the wall here, and the vendor took advantage of it by placing little brooches or pins here along it, which was clever. It was definitely a good use of space. Certainly a lot easier to see, but I didn't spot any that really were worth picking up, at least for me, for resale. We even have some 90s toys, some little action figures down there. Little curio here. Let's peek inside, see if we can't see anything. Got a little Rice Krispies yo yo. Some little matchbox cars. Some more of the Mantiques. Little Cat's Paw Village there, those wooden blocks. <laughs> those were quite the rage. 
Some more display cabinets here. Just want to make sure I take my time and don't miss anything. I really like those Czechoslovakian the wall pockets and the bud vases, little spill vases. Um, I like those. They're bright and they're colorful. Having a collection of those is quite cheery. Got some little bisque baby dolls, a little celluloid one there in the middle. Classic Wade Whimsies. Got some great mid-century planters here. I love the monochromatic ones, the pinks, the yellows. Again, it's just bright and cheerful when you do have a whole collection of those kind of aligned together, whether you're using them or not. You're going to see here again part of the antique mall. There's quite a bit going on. Got a little bit of a narrow hallway here. Uh, some little little knotters, a little German paper mache, candy containers. And there's a good variety of them. Most of them are going to be Easter, though. We got chicks, rabbits, a couple of little flock knotters back from the 60s and the 70s when, you know, folks had those in the back of their car. You will occasionally still see somebody uh, with one in there, and I always get a chuckle out of that. One of my most favorite, of course, are the pinecone elves. Love these little guys. I might have a small obsession with them. I do see that pink frosty snowman. Michael, jeez, that was a regret. Oh, yeah, 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 I tell you. Well, they're not too far away. Only like 20 minutes. Rawr. <laughs> Only 20 minutes away. So what, I have two quilts and... Um, <laughs> A little putz pink frosty the snowman some victoria era uh, ornaments here with the tinsel uh just 65 dollars these are most often accredited with dresden dresden did do quite a bit of the embossed die cuts and folks would kind of craft and make the tinsel ornaments with them sometimes with the spun uh glass you'll see a lot of those uh, with angels they kind of created wings out of the spun glass now, I did spot this little Boyd's bear here. She's a little bunny rabbit. I think she's absolutely adorable, and she's only $2, so of course, or $2.95, pardon me. Uh, so I am going to go ahead and pick her up. She is articulated. I've done well with the mini Boyd's, um, and whether I sell her or give it as a free giveaway, ooh, a little soulless celluloid baby doll here. She's only $6 to murder you in your sleep. It's a bargain, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but yeah, I've done well with those. Happy little emoji monkey there, thermometer. Mm, yeah, no. We're going to just stick with the Boyd's bunny. Here we are. Good bit of the Fiesta there in a different color ways. Uh, I have been keeping my eye out for these cobalt pieces. Again, it is a discontinued color. $5. That's actually the cheapest that I've ever seen. One of these coffee mugs. Uh, they usually go for $10 to $15. As well. <laughs> so what I've been, I probably should have picked that up. I'm actually staring at a cabinet full of them, so maybe that isn't necessary. <laughs> Look at this old Fenton egg, this four-footed, $20, not bad, and the unusual sculpt. I have enjoyed picking up the milk glass lately. I think a cabinet, a curio cabinet filled with the milk glass, it very much is a nostalgic thing. I think if you do fill it with some unusual sculpts, it really can be a very visually appealing and interesting um, look to it. So I would encourage you, don't, don't pass up the milk glass. Now, I did spot this beautiful silver... Uh, mercury glass tree topper i thought it said like six dollars i can't there's two price tags in there and i read the one and i didn't see the other one i was most interested in it because it had this coil the coil um wire around it now it does look like it would have had the spun glass at the top i don't believe that it is broken it would have just had that spun glass kind of spilling out of the top uh, they have it priced at thirty dollars that's not the price that i saw initially this was the price I saw, $9.95, and I would have picked it up at $9.95, but the $30 was a little much. All right, and moving on, I did see this Barnum & Bailey, this little, it is a reproduction uh, print. I love the clown on him. He's so good. I would have loved to frame this. Uh, I've really been loving the circus-themed items, $45. Um, uh, you know, I don't know if that's a good thing. That's a bad thing. It's, you know, somebody loves it and they appreciate it, even though it's a reproduction, somebody may see the value in it. Um, but at, at a reproduction, I just, I couldn't warrant the $45 for myself. So I did leave it there. Uh, this room was interesting. It was a hodge, a conglomeration <laughs> of different items. Uh, it was a little bit of a treasure hunt. That's okay. Really liked the silver overlay, overlay, not overlay, Michael, silver plate basket here. This is really pretty. It was quite ornate in that relief, the embossed image on it. 
Um, unfortunately, the price was at $55, so I just couldn't uh, warrant, unfortunately, picking up this one. But I did enjoy seeing it. I will say that. Oh, $50. Pardon me. Well, $50 and $55, there was, again, something super exciting. I don't know. I'm going to switch to my phone to tell you about it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Don't trip, Michael. Be careful. Yeah, I didn't see anything else in there, so we're going to go ahead and move on into our next room here. This one was a little bit easier to kind of navigate. Mm, E.T. phone home. I think those are Pizza Hut or Pepsi Hut. Maybe Pizza Pepsi Hut. Pepsi Hut. <laughs> Don't you guys remember Pepsi Hut? Oh, Longer Burger Baskets. Oh, you. Mm, yeah, but nothing else here. Let's go on. Kind of moving on down to a little narrow hallway here. Um, I spotted some Christmas. And again, talking about the Dresden reproduction here. Some more of the ornaments, just none that I was really looking for. So moving on into a different part of the antique mall here. A lot going on. This is larger items. Look at that old uh, spring. What is? What do you call that? A mattress? Or is that? That's the box spring, I think. Ooh, look at the wicker lamp. Jeez. So again, a lot of the furniture pieces. Ooh, do you see the clawfoot table there with the glass balls on it? I totally missed that. That was a good piece, Michael. You didn't even capture it. I saw it on video. Mm, don't really spot anything for us. This is an interesting. I like the look of it with the marble top, but I do think somebody repainted it that green. Ooh. Oh my gosh, do you see that? Do you see it in there? It's a little Victorian. It's a, it's a mercury glass spider web ornament. Check it. Oh, it's only $10. You know I got that. It's so amazing. Oh my gosh, it's so good. All right, there is a downstairs. So I guess technically there's one, two, four floors. Yeah, we're down in the basement. We were on the first floor. There are two other levels that we'll check out briefly. Um, so just a whole bunch of kind of stuff down here. I uh, didn't really spot anything that spoke to me or said, hey, Michael, you should take me home. Do have some quilts. They didn't look to be overly ornate. So mm, some clear glass, nothing that was special in the clear glass department. So I say no. A little corner shelf there. I thought that was interesting. I don't know if this is a newer one. I think it is, just given the wood. Um, I could be wrong. This one was priced at $25. I don't know if it was Victorian era, though. I do like that sawtooth on the edge, though. Mm, this little clown here looks Italian. Hurrah. Like the little shaving mug here. Uh, this was a reproduction piece. It's uh, holiday designs. It is like, uh, it's vintage, um, but it is made to look from like the 20s and 30s there. Very Francoma in the glaze, I will say that. And some of them, oh, did you see it? I didn't see it initially, but I saw them. What I did see was this box of ornaments, but... Mm, they were just solid colors. This one kind of looked interesting. And then I was like, oh, that's a contemporary. It's like a sugared uh, pear, a pink pear at that. Oh, there I did. I saw it. It's a Fisher Price, Sesame Street. Um, you know, this was only $25, but it didn't have any of the pieces, which overall it was in good condition. The stickers were a little faded. So they weren't super bright or vibrant, but they were all still there. And $25 is a really good deal. Uh, Semi-regret on that one. Semi-regret. And of course, we are now moving along in the basement, but didn't spot anything else in this booth. But we're definitely going to want to check it out. Got a little of the Fenton marble glass here. $25, the blue and white. That's got some really great striping on it. I will say that. Usually it's a little bit more muddled, it's more subtle. Um, they kind of blend in, but I like the striping on that one. Some more Fisher Price here for the barn. So what am I up to? We're up to two crazy quilts, a pink frosty putt snowman and a Sesame Street 
<laughs> Welcome to my life. <laughs> you know, variety is the spice of life, they say. Oh, goodness. I mean, at least that's what they say, and I'm going with it. <laughs> So there's a good bit of stuff to see, but I wasn't really spotting a whole lot for resale, at least for me. Got some vintage boards games there, 80s and 90s, as disturbing as it is to say. Now this vendor has got a whole a lot of stuff. And I do remember, um, I had been here once before, and while there is some good stuff in here, I love that those driftwood uh, sculptures there, the seafloors, you're seeing the anchor there. I do remember the prices being a little uh, pricier, uh, more collector than resale friendly. Um, so I still wanted to check it out and see if I couldn't find anything. My goodness, there's a lot. There's a peace sign. There's a fish skeleton, which, okay, is interesting. And you'll see why in just a second. Pretty little art glass dish here. Thought this would be cute for Valentine's Day, but it's priced at $35, which I don't, it's not the worst with some Bolacante in there, but it's just at resale. I did decide to go ahead and leave it behind. Um, the sculpt, I, it's just, they're common. I am just going to say it. I don't think that it's dynamic enough. I don't. I said it. Here we've got a Rempel squeaker. It was still nice and soft. A lot of times the Rempel squeakers do get very hard. This one's priced at $35. It's Milky the Cow. I love the patina on those. It almost has like a sapia filter. <laughs> <laughs> to it. I enjoy those. I only, I actually am only down to two squeakers and they are actually rentals. There's a dapper uh, frog. I have it in two sizes for Pinocchio. You see, there is a lot to choose from, but unfortunately there just wasn't a lot there for us to buy. Shells are definitely stuck. That's for sure. Alligator run. I'll tell you what, if you've never seen one of those, look at that. I don't even know. <laughs> I was freaked out and I was like, you know what? I'm going to freak you guys out right along with me. <laughs> it's most definitely the strangest thing I've ever found were some like vacuum sealed fish skeletons <laughs> in the basement of the antique mall. <laughs> Why not? Didn't I just say variety is this place of life? Well, live and learn, Michael. Live and learn. Mm. So this was just nothing that I was looking for. So yeah, we are going to head upstairs to the second floor. Now, I will say that the second floor, um, I turned immediately to the right. <clears throat> but when facing the front of the building, it's our left. The left has um, most of the vintage and the antique goods, but there really just wasn't a whole lot for us. So we did want to check things out and give things a fair shot. Uh, the right side of this floor is just filled, and I do mean filled, with books. There's very few antique. Most of them are vintage. Um, though I will say that we did find, of course, the Walt Des Disney, a tramp. Uh, Halloween costume set here at $35. It's not the worst. Um, it's a really interesting material. It's not like that molded cheesecloth. It's not the plastic. I've never seen one like that before. So really interesting. Uh, we do, of course, have some vintage vinyl here. There's some DVDs and more books. Um, but yeah, the books take up the vast majority of the space on the second floor. So uh, you just never know. Um, I know that Richard and I have been in this booth before. I know Richard found a mantle clock. I think something else. I can't remember what. Um, so I did want to check it, see if maybe they got some new things in. Maybe they did, uh, but I didn't really see anything uh, for me to get for resale. And that's okay. So, yeah. More, again, of just kind of like the antiques. I don't know that antiques or vintage can have a gender, but, you know, hey, there we are. There is a quick look of all of the books. Like I said, it's it's a lot. Um, I, some of the shelves are, are kind of in a genre. Most of them are not. Um, so if you are a book lover, then Old Mint Antique Shop is definitely a place that you want to check out. 
especially if you have some time to kill because there's certainly going to be a book here. I do love to read. I unfortunately don't have a whole lot of time to do it. Alrighty, guys, we are now going to go up to our third floor, but technically our fourth floor. There are more contemporary items up here that we do find some interesting things. I did spot this little quilt here. It does look to be man-made. Uh, then I did spot this 1950s, what I thought was 1950s chenille, uh, but this is one of the older ones, this beautiful li lilac back with the white to it. Unfortunately, as I was unfolding it, there was a good bit of tattering and tearing to it. So I just kind of was like, you're going to have to live there. This is really interesting is this buffet and hutch here in the willow art. Uh, it's really interesting. It's quite frankly, very folk art. Um, I really dig it. Uh, we do have the artist here, Pat Henry, uh, and it's only two twenty five dollars each. I think that you know, if you loved a very woodsy, a very bohemian, organic kind of feel, these pieces would be beautiful. Uh, and again, only two twenty-five. dollars I bet that that was a lot of work put into those. So again, some more contemporary. We've got some clear-cut glass. I didn't see sculpts that, that were really um, that intriguing or interesting to me. Those mid-century armchairs, those were really interesting, I will say that. I'd probably want to reupholster them. Didn't really dig that blue and white fabric. Um, so here we are, of course, looking out the front. Those right there. That fabric I didn't really like. And we have a whole section of Christmas over here. We've got an Anna Lee, Mrs. Claus. This is the larger one. Uh, she's definitely priced reasonable, especially for a collector at only $45. Those are usually at 60 to 120, just depending on what one it is. So we've got a whole lot of the Christmas here. He did spot the little mouse in the object. I don't know. <laughs> it's got a little corsage piece here. I do usually like picking up the bits and bobs. We're so far out of season that I kind of held off. You know, he did spot this baggie of the uh, aluminum foil, aluminum light reflectors. And it's a bag of 23 for $22, which is pretty good. But I have so many of them that I was like, chill out. Then I did see this is a little wall mount and you would pull the cord down and we get to begin to play music. While it is in its original packaging at $49.99, I did decide to leave that one behind. Uh, we do have some little baggies. Oh, and then I spotted it. Do you see them? Heck yeah. It's our little Santa Claus here. He is only, get it in frame, Michael, geez. It's only $2. These things are quite pricey. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. I maybe eventually will get it in frame. Oh, there we go. <laughs> he does have the painted face. I was trying to figure out what was going on here. It does appear that he's got some limbs of another creature in here. And at only $2, I most certainly picked him up. And then I did see some little bottle brush trees. I don't like that faux snow. It does not come off. I don't know what material, honestly, they used for it. So I typically don't mess with them because they did like to use toxic materials back in the 40s and 50s. Um, so I say no go to those. Uh, so, of course, that $2 Santa had me digging around in the, um, the Christmas baskets here. I did see the little spun head uh, angel. I, again, have so many of those that I did decide to leave her behind. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't miss anything else. Of course, the plastic Christmas. There's nothing like a plastic Christmas. I will say that. It just has that specific smell to it that I do love. And some longer burger baskets here. Uh, some more contemporary stuff. Some 80s little ornaments. Didn't really spot anything else. Decided to go through one more basket just to be safe. Um, some cute stuff, but it just didn't have, I got really lucky with the Santa. I didn't get really lucky with anything else, but hey, you never know until you start digging. Those are plastic. They're not real. You know, if they were real glass, Mercury Garland, I would have picked them up, but yep, nothing there to see. Alrighty guys. Well, that is it. We're going to head on downstairs, but before we do, I did want to go through these bottles that I had saw when I came in and I didn't film them. They were really interesting. 
I really like this Yukum Fall. It's a eucalyptus um, nose and throat. It was $15. I love the green glass. The fact that the paper label was still there. It does have the dropper, the glass dropper in there, and it's still soft. The, the squeeze bottle is still soft. So I did pick that up. That is for a, a me kind of thing. And there were some other bottles under here. I like that turpentine one, but the prices just weren't where I needed them to be for resale. I would have loved to have picked these up. I think that these make a, a really great addition to, to any collection. So I did want to capture those on camera. Um, and we're going to wrap it up here in just a moment. Make sure that you do stay tuned for the wrap up because I have some other things to show you. Oh yeah, I do. Alrighty guys, while well, I'm back in the car in the warmth, yes I am. Um, I did pick up some other items while I was there. I didn't get them on film. Okay, let's check it out. <gasps> Look at that. That Victorian button, it was only $12. Oh, she's darling. She's a little sweetheart. That's a good size though too. Um, and I did get a vintage jewelry set here. Now I got the brooch as well as two of the clip-on earrings. Um, here's the brooch. Wasn't that sparkly? I love it. And it does have this clip-on. Now I did, hello. I did spend that many dollars on it. I did, but it also contains uranium. In it, these lighter Aurora Borealis ones, they do fluoresce. So I was excited to get it. It's the complete set. I'll show you. This is one of the two clip ons. Isn't that beautiful? They are stamped. It's uh, B E A U Jewels, Bow Jewels. I don't know if that's focusing or not, but so I did pick up those two items. It was a great trip. I, I really did enjoy it. Um, you'll have to let me know down in the comments what your favorite find of the day is or the items you wish I had most picked up, like the crazy quilt. Uh, don't make me regret it too much. And uh, you guys, until next time, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.